guess what? We're gonna do some more mobile home stuff today. Today we're gonna to be talking about title research. Sounds lovely, exciting, it sounds mysterious. It's not boring, but it's extremely important. That's why I'm gonna teach it to you today. So with title research, there's quite a few big glaring, just obvious things that we need to be thinking about. Um, are we getting the title to the right home? Are we actually talking to the seller? You know, are we getting, you know, are we getting free and clear access to our home? Does it have liens against it? Does it have all those kinds of stuff? Now, I am a Texas investor, if y'all haven't figured that out by now. Texas, though, I believe is one of the only states in the union that allows online title research. So what I'm going to do for you today is review the title research process in Texas so you can see how I do it. But if you're in Virginia, Vermont, Ohio, Memphis, Tennessee, I don't, I don't really care. If you're somewhere outside of Texas, you're going to have to figure out how to do this inside of your state. Fortunately for us here in Texas, it's super simple. And I'm going to go through that process with you so that way you can figure that out. So some of the first things I'm going to do with title research is I'm going to verify with the homeowners their understanding of title. And what I mean by that is like, hey, when you bought this house, how did you buy it? Like, did they give you the title to it? Do you have the title? And it's not going to be common, but it's not necessarily uncommon either that the homeowners will not have the title to the home. And if they don't have the title to the home, there's going to be several things that we're going to have to do to figure out what's going on there. But let's say they do have a title to the home. What if that title has a lien against it? How are we going to get that lien cleared? What if there's... Um, what if the home's installed in a location different than what it says on the title? What if they don't have a title, but they have a bill of sale? You know, here are some of the things that we're going to be finding out and that we need to figure out how to resolve as we're moving forward. So one of the first things I want to do is verify the owner. If I have access to a title, um, I want to verify that whoever is shown on the title is the person that I'm talking to. And if the person I'm talking to is not the person on title, I need to figure out why I'm talking to them. You know, why, why have you uh, chosen to contact me to sell this home when it doesn't show that you're the owner? And that'll give you some further insight as to what's going on and how to approach that. Uh, I also need to verify the location. It's not incredibly important, uh, maybe in other states, but in Texas, the install location must verify the location on title Otherwise, they may require an inspection to be done. In Texas, like 98 plus percent of all mobile home moves are uh, inspected. And so if they see that it's been moved and not inspected, you may flag, get flagged for a uh, inspection. I'm wanting to see if there's any previous liens on title. Previous liens being um, tax liens possibly or purchase liens. You know, if someone purchased, borrowed the money to purchase the unit and there's a lien against it, that's important. Taxes, we just mentioned that, tax liens, I want to verify that that's current. I want to verify lot rent is current. That may not show up on title. I know we're talking about title, but I do want to talk to the uh, landlord and verify that title is, uh, not title, but lot rent is current. See if there's any bi bills of sale from previous sales. I may not always come up with a title. I might have a bill of sale. Um, installment loan documents. Let's say they didn't receive a title, but they did receive the loan document saying that you'll pay X amount of dollars for X amount of time for this period of time. And everything on paper shows that they've had it paid off. And what you'll, this happens not uncommon. Like I'll, I'll have a seller say, Hey, I bought it and I got a bill of sale and I've got, you know, all my paperwork and the paperwork, you know, I paid it off two years ago, but when I paid it off, I never saw the title. I never got the title. Not uncommon. And those are the things are just not all that uncommon. Uh, let me go back through here, though, and show you how I would research title in the state of Texas. So to verify owner, let me pull up what we have here in Texas. And what we have here in Texas is called an SOL, a Statement of Ownership and Location. Let me get that pulled up here for you. I think it's funny, but yes, in the state of Texas, when you buy a mobile home, you receive an SOL. All right, so if I pull up this... All right, so it shows the date that this SOL was issued, right here, 3-4-2014, the manufacturer of that home, the label slash seal number. Remember guys, what is the label? What is the label? The label is the chunk of metal that's about two inches tall and three inches wide located on the back of the mobile home on the skinny side bottom left corner. 
So if I show up to a home, that is one of the things that I need to identify. Where is my HUD plate and my HUD label? The HUD label being that two inch by three inch chunk of metal riveted to the back of the home on the skinny side, bottom left corner. But there's my label and serial number, seal number right there. That is an important piece of information that I want. And I'm gonna to want to verify that this SOL, Statement of Ownership and Location, vaguely can be synonymous with title. It's essentially the title to the, to the home. <coughs> I wanna verify that this title is the right one for the home. So I'll verify that the label seal number is the same as what's on my title. All right, serial number, um, same scenario. I wanna make sure that the HUD plate shows that my serial number is the same. I'm not really worried about the weight and size, but if I keep scrolling down, I'm gonna see the date of manufacture. That was the end of 1998. Anybody wanna guess what I paid for a October built 1998 uh, single wide home that's 1,292 square feet? I paid, I believe, I'm not positive, so I'm not going to give you an exact number, but I remember this home. I paid either $700 for it or $1,500 for it, somewhere in that range. And I think it was 700 bucks is what I paid for that home. But if I scroll down, keep scrolling, I show that we're elected as personal property, owner of record, that would be my wife, seller or transfer, that's who I bought the home from, uh, and that was the location of its physical address. So going back to what I was saying earlier, the physical address on this SOL shows to be Miller Ferry Road, number 118. I need to verify that that's where the home is. If this home is not there, I may run into an issue whenever I transfer title that they're going to want a home inspection done. All right, so I keep looking through here. You see right here where it says no lien? All right, so there's no liens currently recorded against this home. If there were liens, this is where they would be. But just because you have a title in front of you, that says no lien on it, does that mean that there's no lien on it? No, it does not. The paperwork had no lien on it when it was printed. That printed piece of paper that you have might be 10 years old and it has a lien on it now. So we're gonna need to verify that there are no liens against that house. Let me show you how to do that in Texas. So let's go through a scenario of I show up to a home and they have no statement of ownership and location. They have no bills of sale. They have nothing to document that it is their home. But they swear that it's their home and that they have the title. So I could trust them and believe that it's their home and I would love to trust and I will trust, but I'm also gonna verify before I spend that money. How's that work? Let me pull up this internet. Let me, pull, let me go ahead and pull up the internet. I'm gonna get this pulled up over here. All right, there's that one. Let me see if I can get this one pulled back. All right, where's my mouse? All right. All right, so I've got this over here on the screen. In Texas, all mobile homes are governed by the Texas Department of Housing and Community Affairs. Most other states will be regulated by the Department of Public Safety or the Department of Motor Vehicles, whichever one controls titles for your car. Most states uh, title their mobile homes the same way they title their cars. So if you're in another state, you might want to search for the Department of Motor Vehicles or the Department of Public Safety uh, Manufactured Housing. So if I come back over here, let me get back over there. I'm just going to find my way over. All right, so this is TDHCA, but I'm going to go to the Manufactured Housing Division of Texas Department of Housing and Community Affairs. If I click on that, sorry, got a phone call. All right, if I click on that, I'm going to scroll down and looking over here on the side, I see this little button that says recording ownership and titling. Very important for any investor in Texas. If you're not in Texas, try and figure out some way through your local um, resources to find out, you know, how to gain access to, to viewing title, title records. I don't know if you can or cannot in your state. All right, so I'll click on this one. There's lots of information here, man. If, you've, if you're planning on doing any investing in Texas at all, I would go through and read like all of this information that you possibly can read all of this stuff. Like you got FAQs over here, fees, tips for successful ownership and lien recordation. There's all kinds of wonderful stuff for you to have out here, man. This is where I learned most of my state specific stuff on Texas was this website right here. But this little link right here says research manufactured home ownership records. If I click on that, 
it's going to now take me to a form field that will allow me to input some information and research these homes. All right, remember on the uh, statement of ownership and location that I just had up there on the screen. Let me see if I can get it pulled up here. Let me, there we go. I'll pull that back over there for you. All right, remember we have this right here, the label seal number. Now remember in this scenario, I said that I was gonna pretend like I'm showing up to a house and they don't have a title. And here I am pulling out this title to show you. Well, remember that label seal number should be on the home on the skinny side back left-hand corner, bottom left-hand corner on the back skinny side. So even though I don't have a title, I should easily be able to find uh, a label seal when I show up to the house. And if that's missing, I'm gonna look for the data plate located inside the home that will also show me the serial number. But now that I know the label number, I'm gonna go back over to that website. Let me find my cursor and how to get, there we go. If I come back over to the mobile home division, that was RAD, oops, probably that one that's auto-populating, okay? Let me give you a little word of advice for anybody that's here in Texas trying to research these homes. If you notice that the number after those three letters is a seven digit number, 1109621, seven digits. You will often find label numbers that are six digits long. They only have six digits. If they only have six digits, you will need to add the seventh, which would be add a zero to the front of it. If you do not, it will not search in this system. I found that out the hard way. Not easy one to figure out. It has to be seven digits, but I hit submit. Boom, there it is, serial number. Owner shows BMC3 certificate, and I can click on this. All right, so here is all of the information about that home. It is showing to be the exact same home as it was. So this is a 1,292 square foot festival uh, limited manufactured 1010 of 98. That is the exact same information as what we have on here. It's a festival limit 1010 98, 1292 square feet. So there's all the information on it. Let me scroll down. It's currently installed in Cass County, Atlanta, Texas. So if we look at that, that's in Atlanta, Texas. When this original SOL was recorded, this home was in Wilmer, Texas. It's been moved. So if I am standing in Wilmer for whatever reason, and my title says that the home is in Atlanta, that's a problem. It's not a big problem. It's just a problem that I'm going to have to address and deal with. The seller was RGN, the current owner is MC3, and the previous owners were Mayberry Larry, Dorothy Mayberry, uh, Jorge Padilla, Northwind Properties, and Miranda Moore. That property has transferred names a couple of times. But if I keep scrolling down, I'm looking for active mortgage liens. There's none shown here on this website. That's a good thing for me. If it did show a lien, I would need to research that lien, contact the lien holder, and verify that all funds have been paid off. I might need the seller to assist me with that. I might need the seller to get on the phone and be like, hey, um, you know, I had a lien with you, or I had a loan with you. I don't need proof that it was paid off. I need proof of X, Y, and Z. One thing that you might find, and I don't know how you deal with it in other states, is that you'll find a, um, where are we at here? You will find often where a lien is held against the home, but that lien holder is no longer in business. Green Tree Financial is a very big lien holder on mobile homes, and Green Tree Financial is still around. Another one you'll see is Century, Century 21. They do a lot of mobile home loans. But what happens if I get a hold of a lien holder and they're no longer in business? I've had that happen twice. In Texas, we fill out what's called an affidavit of fact. And that affidavit of fact says, you know, I'm just going to say Green Tree because it's in my head. Green Tree would loan me money to buy this house. Uh, They're no longer in business. Here are all the phone numbers that I have of contact form. I've tried contacting all of them. Here are all the known addresses. I've sent certified mail to all of them to try and contact them. I've had no way of contacting these people. Will you please release the lien? I've had the state do it two out of two times. I cannot promise you they'll do it every time, but they did do it two out of two times with an affidavit of fact. You're going to have to figure out how to figure that out in your state. 
All right, so looking at another home, here's another house that I purchased not too long ago. Let's take a look at this. This is what I got when I showed up to the house. This is a conditional sales contract. I'll go ahead and read through it with you though, but it says, for good and valuable consideration, this conditional sales contract is entered into between Rachel Parker as the seller and Chris Woods as the buyer. Seller agrees to sell and buyers agree to buy the following goods on a conditional sale. Wood Lake Mobile Home, manufacturer, blah, 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 label seal number, blah, 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 Kenmore refrigerator, hot point electric stove, 12 by 12 storage building and workshop. All goods are accepted in as is condition, sales price $1,000. The amount was paid in full on 228 of 2014 by Rachel Parker, or from Chris Woods to Rachel Parker. That is all I had whenever I showed up to that house. That's what the seller had. That's what the seller assumed as their ownership in the property. So how am I going to buy this guy's home? How am I going to buy this guy's home? Let's do some research on it. If I come back over here to TDHCA, let me get that pulled up. Okay. I'm going to come back over here. And where am I at over here? I'm going to come back to view ownership records. Label seal number. Well, remember that bill of sale? That bill of sale had something important on it. And I'm going to pull that important stuff up for you real quick. What is this label number? TEX 2841.62. TEX 2841.62. T-E-X 2142, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling there. That's a bad one. 2841.62, 2841.62. All right, what happens if I search for that? All right, I'll hit submit. All right, it found it. The owner shows to be B&L Estates. All right, used Wood Lake, 924 square foot. Uh, where's the manufacture date? 1983. Let's take a look at that bill of sale and see if this information is correct. Wood Lake Mobile Home, that's correct. Manufactured of 83, that is also correct. 14 by 70, let me double check that. That is... <coughs> Fourteen by sixty-six, so that may not be accurate. But everything else I'm seeing shows to be accurate. Serial number twenty-six begins in twenty-six, ends in seventy-two. Begins with twenty-six, ends with seventy-two. I feel like that's probably the right home. I have no reason to not believe it's the right home. So if I come back over here, I'm gonna start scrolling through and finding out what all we have going on with this. <clears throat> Current owner is B&L Estates. So if I'm talking to the seller and the seller was Chris Woods, like over here, this was supposed to be Chris Woods. If I pulled this up and that was not Chris Woods, I'd be a little nervous, okay? The seller shows to be Prosperity Alliance. That was one of my previous companies. So that part is correct. The current owner shows to be B&L, which is who I sold the home to, but I do not see Chris Woods over here anywhere in the previous owners. So what I had found out whenever I was working on that specific mobile home is they had bought it from Charlie Eskridge. Pamela also bought it from Charlie Eskridge. Charlie sold it to Pamela. Pamela sold it to Chris. Chris sold it to me. And during that time, title never transferred. So I found the original bills of sale. I filed affidavits of fact. Affidavits of fact to transfer it from Charlie to Prosperity. And then once Prosperity owned it, I sold it from Prosperity to B&L. I paid somewhere around all in on that property, around $4,000 for the remodel, for the purchase. I think I paid a thousand for the unit or 1200 for the unit and another 3000 or so in remodels. I turned around, sold it to B and L I think for 12,000 cash. So that wasn't a bad deal, but we're also wanting to find out lien holders. I show no active mortgage liens and I show no active tax liens right here. Let me click on that and verify though. Okay, total active tax liens, zero. Scrolling through, I see none, but there looks like there was some previous attached released tax liens. Okay, so I had one in 2005, 1989, 2011, 2012, 
in as late as 2013 from the Collin County Tax Office for $121, another one for $139, $156. So what I was saying is these tax liens are not that expensive. But if I scroll through here, that's how I'm gonna record and search for title here in Texas. If I come back over to my slides though, let me get my slides pulled up. Overall, the things that I mentioned is we need to verify who the owner is. We've done that through the research. I now know that if I'm looking online, that I know who the owner is. And the owner may not be who I'm talking to, but the person that I'm talking to may have been the person that purchased it. They just never completed the documents were required to transfer the home. And if that's the case, not a problem. You can help them with transferring the paperwork. Where it is a problem is if that person is not the homeowner and they're a tenant, or they're a cousin, they're a, a son, daughter. You see this all the time where somebody will try and sell you a home that does not belong to them. And I've had that happen to me twice, so I say it happens all the time. Twice is too many times. You're gonna wanna make sure that the owner of the home is the person in title. Location, another thing that's important, but it's not gonna be a deal breaker for you. If the location is wrong, great. You're just gonna have to deal with what may happen and you may come up with some inspections. The state may ask you some more questions. I don't know what it's gonna be like in yours, but I might end up with a home inspection, several things like that. Previous liens are extremely important. You don't wanna get a title that has liens because you're now liable for it. So you're gonna do some lien research, verify who's holding the liens. Are they still active? Are the liens still active? Is that company still in business? If that company's not still in business, what is your state gonna to require to release that lien so I can, you know, I can move forward with transferring title? Are the taxes current? You should be able to figure that out online. If you can't figure that out online, you may need to go to your taxing authority in your local jurisdiction. Lot rent, talk to your park manager. Bills of sale, talk to the seller. Those bills of sale will give you a massive amount of information required that'll help you go through and figure out where's the chain of title broken. Um, installment loan document, same thing. That gives you more ammo to, to do your research to figure out who owns this home so that way you can go through and purchase the property. I know that this wasn't probably um, pertinent to all 50 states, but the process is still gonna be the same. Texas has its own way of doing things for you. I'm gonna need you to figure out how to do this in your state. Once you figure out how to do it in your state, this is pretty rinse and repeat. So hope you got some value out of this class. I, I don't really know if I've got much else to say. I've got options below in the forms for you to drop as many questions as you'd like. Drop away questions below. Have a good day.